want you to hear Oscar De La Hoya earlier this morning on Mike and Mike. Take a listen. I think Saturday nights was a was a prop. Um, I think uh, I just feel that boxing and, and the UFC it's, just, it's two different sports. I mean, look, I, just because uh, you know one one is playing with a basketball uh, is not going to go out there and, and, and throw a football. You know, it's, it's just two different sports. You, it's just, I just I just thought it was a prop. Okay. So the point that Oscar was trying to make is that. Because they're two different sports, one person can't come from one sport into the next sport and dominate it. But he's wrong because Holly Holm, who was a two-time welterweight world champion, um, she went into MMA and beat Ronda Rousey, the person that was on his boxing magazine, The Ring, an MMA fighter. So I don't understand. Oscar is so filled with contradictions it's just ridiculous, you know. He may be hateful of Floyd. He may be jealous of Floyd. And that's clouding his judgment. And in fact, I think Oscar De La Hoya actually... Hmm, Oscar De La Hoya actually was offering for Canelo to face Conor McGregor. So I'm not quite sure how Oscar can say these statements about this fight being a fraud because they're two different sports with a straight face. I just don't understand it. Unless he's just hateful. And then the other thing that doesn't make sense to me before I let Max Gilman talk is if you're promoting Gennady Golovkin versus Canelo Alvarez, the last thing you want to be doing is downing a Mayweather-McGregor fight that did well. It did a great box office. People actually enjoyed the fight. And everybody won from that fight. The fans, Mayweather, McGregor, everybody MMA, boxing, everybody won. How could you not like that and use that to promote your fights? I just don't understand. And the other thing that was very interesting to me is also that Bernard Hopkins made some statements about how the Mayweather versus McGregor fight is actually going to help boxing. And he was rooting for Floyd to knock out McGregor, <laughs> which he did. And and so I, I don't understand how how this fight could be so negatively said by Oscar unless he has a chip on his shoulder and just doesn't like Floyd Mayweather. That's probably the only reason I can see. Anyway, here is Max Kellerman's statements on this. Max, you know De La Hoya. What's your reaction to what he said? Oscar De La Hoya is a great champion. Mm -hmm. Great champion. When he got a hold of his own career, he didn't duck anyone because that kind of stuff, legacy, honor, and all stuff, means something to him. Not to all fighters, but to De La Hoya it did. In fact, Floyd Mayweather will be remembered as a better fighter than De La Hoya, and he was, but marginally better. Partly because Floyd was very selective with who he fought and when he fought them. And I okay. We already dealt with this in the last video. Floyd fought opponents that the fans wanted him to face most of his career. Okay? The only fight where Floyd did not deliver within a year for what the fans demanded he delivered was the Pacquiao fight. So if Max Kellerman is saying that Floyd Mayweather didn't fight everyone and he didn't fight who the fans wanted him to fight, when they wanted him to fight... He's actually being dishonest. The only exception is Pacquiao. And according to Dana White, not my words, Dana White said he did not understand. He does not believe Mayweather was the one that held up that fight, but Bob Aaron. Because when he had to cut the deal with Mayweather and Al Heyman, it was the easiest deal ever to cut. And so he could not believe that Pacquiao did not make this deal with Mayweather since 2010. Okay? That's Dana White's words, not mine. Let's go. Oscar was just like, once he became his own promoter, I'll fight everybody, line them up in their primes. So when you do that, you have some losses. In fact, De, De La Hoya, at the end of his career, and Mayweather in his prime, Floyd beat him, but it was competitive. Oscar De La Hoya, a great fighter, and I understand that these kind of issues mean things to him. To take it seriously, to take on the best, to not to make anything, you know, a just spectacle, but always an athletic competition. But I'll tell you something. That notwithstanding, I don't think Oscar should be downing someone else's promotion. And Dana White has made this point, and I agree with him. Dana, by the way, 
is all for Canelo and Triple G, as everyone in the fight game is, all fight games. I want to see this great fight. And Oscar has such a great product coming up September 16th in Vegas. Triple G and, and Canelo that I think we should be focusing and he should be focusing on his great product and not downing someone else's event, which, by the way, turned out to be the best possible version that event could have been. Agree with Max Kellerman. Well, listen, I, I definitely think that Oscar should not be downing somebody else's event, especially since uh, all indications point to him if he were will, if he were able to get the, that kind of, of, of deal himself, he would have done it. This is what made Oscar De La Hoya great. He'd step out of the box and he did things that very, very few people, very, very few fighters were able to do and would even think of doing. So if he had an opportunity to have Canelo in there with, with uh, McGregor and make the kind of money that Mayweather and McGregor are anticipating that they are expected to make, rather, Oscar De La Hoya would have done it as well. So I definitely agree with you that he shouldn't be down in somebody's, uh, somebody else's promotion. But I also respect the hell out of Oscar from this perspective. This is a guy that did essentially what Mayweather did before Mayweather did it. Mayweather did it better, mm -hmm. generated more revenue, higher pay-per-view sales, et cetera, et cetera. But Golden Boy, before he was a promoter, he was a fighter. Then he transitioned to promotions and did so quite successfully. And as far as I'm concerned, contributed a lot to uplifting the sport of boxing. And he deserves a lot of credit for that. If you take that into consideration, and as a boxer, he has a problem with a champion, the caliber of Mayweather, giving somebody who's never fought professionally an opportunity to step into the ring with him, even though I don't, you know, I can appreciate where, they, where Mayweather's coming from in terms of the money and everything else that it generated, I can also appreciate the, you know, Oscar De La Hoya's position as a boxing purist. You mean Before uh, I go on here, Stephen A. Smith is trying to articulate this, that because Oscar's a boxer, he thought that Conor McGregor, who had no professional boxing experience, should not be in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. This is basically his point, right? And he's saying it's from a boxing purist perspective. Now, it's not that he didn't have fight experience professionally, which is something that Stephen is good. He, he, he didn't mean that. He meant uh, not boxing experience professionally. But as Max Kellerman will counter, and I'll let Max Kellerman counter... Um, whether uh, Oscar is a boxing purist or not if Stephen A. Smith is saying that he's a boxing purist and uh, sorry he's somebody who thinks outside the box then Floyd Mayweather should be allowed to think outside the box and who's to say that someone who's not in boxing and not in the sport of boxing can't bring something to the table new and innovative to boxing and that's what conor mcgregor brought now he wasn't conditioned to go 12 rounds that was something new to him but clearly he brought something new to the table which floyd hadn't seen before which was cool and floyd had to learn how to navigate past it besides that he had he used his reach quite well he used his jabs quite well he boxed quite well okay and showed that he could with more conditioning and, and, and more understanding of the sport of boxing. He doesn't have to be a boxer, but understanding of the sport of boxing, he could actually be competitive against C-level and some D-level. And may I say, dare I say, some C-plus level fighters. I don't say B-minus, not B, not A, not A-minus, none of those. But with, with, with the lower tier boxers. So if he's selective about who he fights in the boxing arena, he could beat those guys, okay? So, he'd have to learn how to turn over his punches properly, but he could beat those guys. So, once again, Stephen A. Smith, I think, whether you're coming from a boxing purist perspective, if you're just coming purely from a boxing perspective, not from a fighting perspective, which is why Floyd was talking about, I can fight. If you're coming from a fighting perspective, it's different. Because from a fighting perspective, it is possible for someone who knows various forms of, 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 of sport and fighting to be able to break the code of a boxer because a boxer is limited to just boxing and the rules of boxing. So that was the intriguing part about this fight. So if you're a boxing purist, then you're limited in your scope of thinking. 
What's going on? About Oscar the promoter. He blazed the trail that's very important. He took control of his own destiny and, and as a fighter, you know, became a promoter. I love what he did and he's very successful. I have a lot of admiration for Oscar. But who exactly was harmed in the Mayweather McGregor spectacle event, fight, whatever he wants to call it? Um, everyone seemed to have a good time. May, uh, McGregor was vindicated because for his pro debut, wait, well, wait. Was it hardly done any better. Floyd won. No, no, but, but. no one got hurt. And furthermore, no one was denied an opportunity. It's not like Floyd was going to fight someone else and fought McGregor instead. So I don't but, understand but Mac, all the, well, and then, Yeah, but you, you're missing the point, Max. He said it before the fight. In other words, his position has been consistent. Yeah. That's why I brought up the fact that he may have a problem with the fact that somebody as great as Mayweather, who was 49 and 0, is going for 50 and 0 you. against a body that somebody that never boxed for. He said that before I, the fight. I got so you. So his position is consistent. But when new evidence emerges, I was with him. It's not a competitive sporting event, and it really wasn't. I mean, Floyd gave him three rounds to punch himself out a little bit, and then just did what he wanted. But I didn't think McGregor was going to be that good. I don't think anyone did. I mean, MMA fans who were out of their minds were saying McGregor was going to knock Floyd out. It's absurd. But, like, McGregor acquitted himself quite well. So here Oscar yeah, but if you're asking, some you have new right information. It changed my mind because you have to react to reality. But, it, but, 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 he doesn't, but he doesn't have to react to reality because that's not his reality. His re Again, I think that here is a good counter-argument by... Max Kellerman. He's saying that the reality is Conor McGregor could box a bit. And he showed that he could use his length and range. And he even was sensible. He was very systematic in how he was trying to break down Floyd. And he brought some extra skill sets to the table that we hadn't seen before a boxer do. And he was able to keep Floyd at bay. And while he didn't have all the pop that he was claimed to have. He had enough pup to keep Floyd respecting him as Floyd was coming in. So, again, the counter-argument is really, really sound, I think. But Stephen A. Smith is trying to go from the purest point of view once again, which is why Stephen A. Smith says this is an exhibition match and it wasn't a boxing match, in his opinion. Let's hear it. reality is that that individual should have never had the opportunity to be in the ring with Floyd. This is a principled position because when you're a champion, particularly that great, somebody shouldn't be allowed to get a shot at you. It doesn't matter how they look. They should not have bypassed the process. I understand where he's coming from with that. I don't agree totally with everything that he said, but I do understand his principled position, and I respect that. And what I'm trying to say is you can't say that McGregor bypassed the process of uh, professional boxing because he earned that through his expertise in MMA. And so why people were convinced that Conor McGregor could possibly beat Floyd is because he is experienced in various forms of fighting. This whole fight was based on one guy specialized in one area versus a guy who has wide experience in several and would resort to those different expertise in several areas to find the holes and flaws in a guy who has one expertise. That was the whole intriguing point about this fight. And to say that Conor McGregor didn't earn his shot at Floyd Mayweather is a little bit being a little bit hypocritical and also being a little bit pompous because people always feel that fighting, you have to grow up through the fighting ranks of boxing. But even though he was fighting a boxing match, notice Conor McGregor was not trained by a boxer trainer. He was trained by an MMA trainer. The idea was that he already had some background in boxing. He knew some things about boxing, but he was going to apply his MMA skills, which would make it more unique to the boxing. Now, he doesn't know how to punch like a boxer and leverage his weight. Clearly, that's one of his problems. But at the same time, his sense of timing was what made him able to hit Floyd Mayweather and also... His skill set was allowing him to be what Floyd Mayweather would describe as awkward, but what I call skilled. And his mobility in the ring was also allowing himself to be an elusive target to Floyd Mayweather. As much as Stephen A. Smith said he had no head movement, he actually kept his head high and he kept a tall stance so that Floyd would be, it would be harder for Floyd to get to his head. And he did 
um, not he snapped back sometimes, and then he would sometimes shift head slots so that Floyd missed him. That's why Floyd missed so much. Stephen A. was like, he's surprised that Floyd was missing so much. No, it's because Conor was moving his head, okay, when it was necessary. So, again, Stephen A. Smith, you know, let's just keep it going. Max Kellerman. Was a Rademacher who was a uh, an Olympic gold medalist. A lot of people criticized Floyd Patterson, who was cl clearly protecting his heavyweight title. Customato, his later Mike Tyson's trainer and manager, was doing that by giving a guy making his pro debut a shot. But Rademacher knocked Floyd Patterson down. He eventually wound up getting knocked out. And at this point, people look back at in history, and it's like a quirky kind of fun thing that happened in the history of boxing. And Rademacher actually took someone else's title shot. In this case, McGregor didn't take anyone else's shot. You know, like I point. don't. I don't understand the point in criticizing after the fact a successful event when what Oscar should be, if I were Oscar, the only thing I'd be talking about is this amazing fight that's coming up September 16th, Triple G versus Canelo, Stephen A. I can't wait for it. I know you can't wait for it. Fight fans, that includes MMA fans, that includes Dana White, by the way. I can't, can't wait, wait for it. that fight. And if I were Oscar, I'd just be all of my breath. None of it would be wasted on anything other than Triple G and Canelo. To add to that point, you guys remember Muhammad Ali faced, at the end of his career, Leon Spinks. Leon Spinks had six pro fights, ladies and gentlemen. But he was an Olympic gold medalist. So he had a great sterling amateur career. But he, he only had six pro fights. And not all of them were in heavyweight division. And Leon Spinks beat Muhammad Ali. My point being this. You cannot say that someone, because they don't have boxing experience, it means that pro boxing experience means that they won't win. Lomachenko, of course, he was an incredible amateur, and Rigondeaux. <laughs> these are in totally different categories. They're not. They're not Conor McGregor. Okay, extensive amateur experience, but these guys, they're they're not even. I thought Lomachenko is he in double digits now? In terms of his fights, probably. You can't just judge people because they didn't have a pro debut. And then the other point is this. There are other greats. Sugar Ray Robinson. We have Julio Cesar Chavez. In the prime of Julio Cesar Chavez's career, he would fight a championship fight, then he'd fight a debutante. Yes, it wasn't sanctioned as a championship fight, but the point, he was a world champion. Floyd's not a world champion. Floyd came out of retirement. And this fight wasn't a championship fight. So for Stephen A. Smith to be saying it's an exhibition match and it shouldn't be counted as number 50, is to be hypocritical. What are you saying about who this is a Chavez? What are you saying about Sugar Ray Robinson? These guys had some stay busy fights. What are you going to do? Okay? These guys fought debutantes, people who had no pro fights and they didn't even have amateur backgrounds. All right? So... I mean, it's kind of hypocritical to, to come down on Floyd. Even Stephen A. Smith talking about it being an exhibition match. Well, Stephen A. Smith needs to remember that Joe Lewis had a couple exhibition matches. In fact, he had exhibition matches that counted to his overall fight total of 63. But the difference is Joe Lewis had one exhibition match which they actually wanted to count as one of his championship fights. And if you're having a championship fight against a debutante, that's not allowed, okay? It shouldn't be sanctioned. That's different to just having a boxing bout with a debutante, all right? And there are tons of all-time greats. You can go through almost every single all-time great from the past. They fought debutantes, and they were world champions at the time they fought it. Floyd's not a world champion right now, okay? Gave up all his belts, retired for two years, came back and fought a debutante. And this debutante has a history of fighting in different styles, but he has a history of fighting. And he has a history of fighting stand-up. So I think that if you're really being true to yourself, and if you say you're a boxing purist, then you wouldn't be hypocritical talking about it's an exhibition match. Whether it's an exhibition match or whether you consider it a full-fledged boxing match, it was highly entertaining. And two, it should count on his boxing resume because the WBC sanctioned it. There's nothing you can do about that. It's sanctioned by the WBC. So you have to count it. And for those people who are being so high and mighty and 
oh so puristico because Floyd Mayweather Jr. has such a high standard, you're being a hypocrite because then you'd have to take away all those fights that you want to give to Julio Cesar Chavez. You would have to take away all those fights you wanted to give to Sugar Ray Robinson. Those 200 fights, right? <laughs> you have to take away all those fights that you gave to uh, who else? There's so, there's so many of them. Um, name a great fighter that you you, you like. All right, just name a great fighter that you like. Now, there's some great fighters, they ended their careers uh, not having stay busy fights. Roberto Duran, stay busy fights. While he was world champion, he was fighting some nobodies. He fought a debutante a couple of times while he was world champion. Nobody talks about these things. All of a sudden, you're a boxing purist. And Floyd is held to this standard that nobody else in the history of boxing ever was held to. And that's another reason why he's TBE. Because he took the bar so high up that you people think it's ordinary what he's doing, which is extraordinary. What he's doing in the ring and what he's doing otherwise. Anybody else at the age of 40, y'all would have no problems with them facing Conor McGregor. They would think he was a challenge. It would be an intriguing matchup. It's Floyd Mayweather. That's all I got to say. You guys have a great one.